Hi, and welcome to the section, creating a social media platform within Bootstrap 4. In this section, we are going to build a front-end user interface to a social media platform site. This will get you started with Bootstrap 4 and help you understand how to use the framework. In particular within this section, we will cover off the heading and navigation of our social media platform, using the Bootstrap grid system to align our content, building the basic content blocks such as a profile section, and finally, adding some polish to the social feed. So let's get started, shall we? First off, in this video, we are going to start our social media platform off with a header and a navigation. This includes preparing our directory structure we built in the introduction section, then diving into Bootstrap and building out a header and navigation for our social media platform. All right, let's start by duplicating the Bootstrap template we created earlier. I'll copy this template here and paste it. I will rename it to social media platform. This will be the template that we're going to use for this section and the next. This section will require Flexbox, so we need to go in and actually open this to make sure it's actually using Flexbox. So first of all, let's open it in our chosen editor. Okay, so I've opened it inside Adam. Let's scroll down um, until we find the variables.scss file within the scss folder. We need to actually switch the flex to true as it's by default is now set to false. So set the true and resave the file. Now, as this is a brand new project, the file didn't actually compile at all. We will need to add this project into prepros itself. So go ahead and open prepros. As you can see here, we have the existing introduction to Bootstrap 4.1. What we need to do is actually add the project. We can do it by dragging in the social media file. And it's actually created a second project. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to social media platform just to kind of help it with the naming convention um, and hit save. So what we need to do now is actually go into our SCSS, to the bootstrap.scss file. And this should be the same output path as we set up previously. And what we need to do is now process the file. This will now compile bootstrap with flex enabled and should us get us started. Okay, now that we've enabled Flex, let's now start working on our template itself. So let's close the SCSS folder and remove this from our recently viewed. Opening up the index.html file. Okay, let's first build our navigation bar. Just within the body, let's create a nav element with a class of navbar. Now, just for testing, we'll place in some text here, navbar, and we'll save it. The navbar class specifies that it will receive the navigation styles from Bootstrap. Checking this out in the browser, it doesn't look like much yet, does it? Now let's continue and add some more classes. Let's add navbar dark and bg primary. The navbar dark class means that any text within this bar will be displayed as white, as if it's been displayed on a dark bar. And the bg primary sets the background color of this bar to the primary color of Bootstrap which in this case is blue. Within the nav element, let's create an element that will be the logo or brand for the site. It should be a link with a class of navbar brand. I'm going to use the text bootstrap social. Viewing this within your browser, you will get to see what we've created thus far. Looking good, let's now add some menu items. After the navbar brand link, let's create an unordered list UL with the classes nav and navbar hyphen nav. With each nested list item, or li, we need to set the class nav-item. Within our first li, let's create a link home. Create a link within the class of nav-link and set the content to home. We can duplicate the li element we just created for home and create two more links for profile and messages. On the first li that hosts the home link, we can add the class of active in order to apply the active link styles that Bootstrap has created. Let's once again preview this in our browser. We will refresh, and as you can see, we now have the three links, home, profile, and messages. The home is activated with the current white state. Directly after the menu, we will now include a search bar. I will paste some code in here and explain it. So what we have here is a form with a class of form hyphen inline, pull hyphen excess hyphen right. This means that the menu will be pushed to the right hand side. Inside that, we have an input with a class of form control, type of text, and placeholder of search. Lastly, within the form, we have a button 
with a class of btn, btn-secondary, type submit, and type submit with text of search inside it. Now viewing this in the browser, we can see a search box over here to the right hand side with a button with search. Now just one note with this. Recently Bootstrap has done some upgrades to the UI within the Bootstrap Alpha build. This UI you see here is the latest. However, throughout the entire video series to come, you may see some old UI, just ignore it knowing this is the latest UI here. The menu and input form are a bit far away on bigger screens aren't they? Let's fix that. Let's wrap everything inside the nav element inside a div with a class of container. A container is a responsive block that centers the content within the middle of the screen. This has now brought in our navigation and our search box within equal distances from the edge of the screen. It's looking almost done, just a few more tweaks to go. We need to now consider how this will work on mobile. We can use a well-known method of responsive navigation, which is collapsing the menu into a hidden hamburger menu. When the user clicks it, it expands. Create a div inside the container that wraps around the navbar content once again, and set the class to collapse navbar-toggable-sm. This enables a menu to collapse on smaller screens, for example, mobile phones. We will add an ID for us to bind the menu to a button in order to toggle the menu. In this case, we'll add collapsing navbar. Right above this, we'll add another button. This button will toggle the navigation. The classes will be set are navbar-toggler, hidden-md-up, we set the type to button, Importantly, we set some data attributes here. The first, data-toggle equals collapse. And secondly, the data-target is set to the ID we previously set before. Finally, we can add some classes to remove certain parts of the menu altogether when viewed on mobile devices. Let's add a hidden-sm-down class to both the form and navbar brand. This adds some styling to hide these elements when viewed on mobile phones. Now before we can view this in the browser, we need to fix a couple of things. We need to add a class of collapse to this button, this to make sure that when viewed on mobile that it by default it is collapsed, and secondly is to fix the spelling mistake here. Collapse has two L's. Here I'm using Chrome's developer's tools to emulate different browser sizes. I can pull down the width here and see it in action. The menu is now closed into this hamburger, and we can click it and actually pull it out open. Pretty cool. And that's it for this video. Let's recap what we have done so far. Firstly, we initiated a project by duplicating the previous template. We then built the basic navigation and heading for our social media platform, 